Okay. I submitted my my PNG of my custom emoji for the speak band book. But now I want to I've taken some time, I've looked at it, I want to rework some things. And I will then create a resubmission and show you how you can update your submissions at any time. As long as you've turned something in by the deadline, you can always improve and resubmit. So what can I do to make this feel a little less generic, a little more specific to what I'm working on, what I'm trying to convey with this story about sexual violence and and feeling ashamed and not empowered to speak out about what happened. So how can I introduce a little bit of, of the violence to it? I think by adding some additional shapes that weren't available in the emoji maker that I'm matching here. So one kind of cartoonish shape I use a lot in my uh, comic book work is the hashtag. And hopefully we have something similar here. There's also speech bubbles, which can be very useful for this particular topic. So I'm in the custom shape options. This is within PhotoP. And I want something that will work for a hashtag. And here, here is one right here. I could always create my own, but I thought right here might be a good place for that. And then I get to pick the color of it, and I think I want something pretty bold, so I'm going to pick kind of a crimson red. Try it on the warmer side of the red spectrum. Maybe a little bit darker. Okay, now I can always control T and I'm going to rotate it so that it's no longer angled. So it's perfectly horizontal and vertical. And to check that, I can always pull a guide over to help my rotation, to show me when I'm actually at vertical. And then hit return. Now the reason I did that is now when I hit Control T, I'll be able to squeeze it and distort it in a way that's even on all sides. That way when I rotate it again, I can kind of control its impact because I want to give it a little bit of funkiness like that. And now when I rotate it, it feels a little bit more customized. I can also play with sizing it. This is all with control T and distorting it a little bit differently. That looks good. And I can hit command semicolon to get rid of those guides. Now this is what's called a tangency in design, where the edge of the hashtag is really close to the edge of the circle. And so that can be uncomfortable to look at. So I just want to push it a little bit in so it's clearly on top of. And then I also want to play with this overall head wrap shape and get a shadow on this side. 
So I'm going to play with inner glow this time. Not just inner shadow, but inner glow, which will be equal on all sides. Click it to, to choose its settings. Take its opacity down. There you go. And that will help with that, that overall look. Okay. Remember, you can always turn those on and off under your effect options. So, here we go. That's the inner glow. This gives a little bit more presence to that head wrap. All right. What else? Maybe the speech bubbles. Now, in order to make room for the speech bubbles, I need to expand the canvas around my emoji. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size, let it be centered, and I'm going to make it, instead of 10, I'm going to make it 12 inches wide and 12 inches tall. And it's going to grow canvas space all around my emoji head. Now I can bring in some new custom shapes. And I want speech bubbles. And do I want it outlined? Or do I want it solid? Let's try solid first. There we go. Where did it put it? It probably put it on top of the last layer that I um, changed. Whatever layer I selected on, it put it on top of that. So I'm going to move it to the very top. And a shortcut for that is Command left bracket and right bracket will move your layers up and down once they're selected. All right, I like the, uh, the boldness of that, but I don't choose that color. And then I want to try rotating it 180 degrees and then flipping it horizontally. So it's just like a little whimper of a speech bubble. Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. Or I could try flipping it vertically, and getting back to what I started with. And I can try having it come out of the mouth just like right here. Maybe at a slight angle. Always good when you're combining elements to watch tangencies and to cover up things that you're not so fond of. Like the teeth going to a sharp point. That's a little annoying, and I can fix that with another shape, but I don't want to draw too much attention to it. So instead, I can use the edges of my new elements to kind of fix that problem for me. Then I can also distort or warp, play with this shape to make it a little bit more customized to what I want.
and right click. And I want a little bit of yellow showing so that you don't have a tangency of the speech bubble lining up right with the, the edge of the mouth. The return, maybe control T, maybe I want to stretch out that bottom tail a little bit. So I'm going to warp and I'm just going to pull out this corner. Maybe move the whole thing just a little bit out. Now, instead of having an internal shadow, I want to have an external shadow. So I'm going to use what's called drop shadow on it. But first, let's change the color. Let's just make it white for the time being. Double click to get the layer styles, and I'm going to try a drop shadow. And I can play. It's going to be the same angle as the same global light, because I have the global angle set. It generally works pretty well. It gives kind of a continuity to everything. But I can play with the size and the distance away from the object the shadow moves at that angle. And then how soft it is, how large it is, and of course how opaque it is. So size will soften it out, spread will just make it bigger. But the more you spread it, the less directional it will seem. Something like that seems to work pretty well. And by having multiply mode on instead of normal, it's just going to darken whatever is behind it. So you'll see it darkens into my other colors as well, just slightly, which is very helpful. Whereas if it was just normal mode, it would just be the same kind of black everywhere. So instead of the brownish tones, you just get kind of a gray tone. But then I can also play with the opacity to let more of those colors underneath come through and make this a little bit more subtle. It also will help the speech bubble to stand out. And be a little bit more recognizable. Now doing all that, looking at the components, the speech bubble seems a little out of place. So I think I want to try, with those effects still there, making it a lot smaller. So it's like a, a little whisper. Maybe just barely breaking the edge. But I want to watch the tangency again. So just barely breaking the edge of the yellow circle. So maybe like there. And if it feels too close to the edge of the yellow circle, it's not too bad. But that tangency, I can always nudge it a little bit more. Just using the arrow keys tiny increments, and I can always rotate it just slightly more. Now the blank white seems to work, especially with the drop shadow, but the, the solid blank red isn't as interesting as if I give it a little bit of, a, um, of an emboss, I think. Kind of like the hand but maybe not quite so strong. I do want to give it the texture. I think. 